because, you know, I didn't think it was too serious. And I thought that people were going to see that I had good intention, but some of the videos I've made have been very cruel. I was a nasty, apathetic, insecure person. I'm not terribly disappointed with the outcome. I lost, that's okay. I think I'd be more disappointed if I didn't know why I lost. The same tactics that are being used to dehumanize trans women are being used to dehumanize all women. Idubs. A man whom I have admired from a distance for many, many years, okay? Idubs, a man who inspired in a lot of ways the series that I am most known for, Video Vigilante. Direct spinoff of, you know, Content Cop, right? Now, first of all, I'd like to open by saying, Mr. Idubs, if you're open to it, I would love to have a conversation with you, either on stream, off stream, however you prefer. Um, but I would love to connect with you, okay? I like a lot of kind of the vibe you're bringing lately. And I think it would manifest in, at the very least, something interesting. You know what I mean? I, don't, I can't make too many promises for myself, I guess. But an interesting conversation I've come to learn for myself is a pretty solid offer you know that's that's certainly something that i uh would be intrigued by right so yeah let me know but um beyond that where is idubs now okay i mean you can pretty easily find this out by just checking his channel he's not exactly hiding but i figured it'd be interesting to rekindle the old idubs uh conversation just by exploring what he has been up to recently because i think that from what i can see at least the direction that Idubs is heading in is much more interesting right now than it was maybe like a year ago or so. And the reason primarily that I am saying that is because, guess what? Guess why? It's because I th can tell that he has been putting, from what I can see, more intention, you know, more uh, opinion, more confidence into some of his more recent videos, okay? Again, you can dislike the videos, you can think whatever about the opinions, but it seemed like for a while, Idubs was on a side quest arc, okay? A uh, lobotomy arc, as we like to put it on this channel. Now, that is not inherently a diss, although I understand how it could be taken as a diss. My videos are lobotomy core? Yes, your videos are lob lobotomy core, okay? But you need to understand that I understand that the lobotomy core is the natural deviation, the natural progression of the insane asylum core, okay? Asylum core results in lobotomy core. You understand how that correlation can occur because you spend too much in the asylum, too much time, sorry, in the asylum, and you're going to get lobotomized. But, yes, Idub's videos, to say that they were not exactly, you know, that engaging for me personally, right? This is a personal opinion thing. Um, would be a bit of an understatement. I have watched, I think, all of these videos, uh, to be clear. And the output has been impressive. But they certainly have lacked a certain kind of, uh, I guess you could say, uh, driving spirit, right? Like a, a focus, a, um, I would say, a force, a spirit, you know? They've been a bit detached, right? Like, I'm going to try and make this thing, and even if I don't make it that good, then, well, who gives a fuck, right? And, again, they're fun, but when I saw this recent video, okay, 100% woman, I was like, oh, shit, the dog's back, you know what I mean? There's a bit of bite in this boy's bark, you know? And uh, there's certainly been flashes of that relatively recently. Okay, what was it? It was Cartonarchs, I think. Yeah, Cartonarchs, he kind of um, kind of goes in on a guy, you know? He, he gives some opinions. But I'd say 100% Woman is definitely where we're, we're seeing the, the dog return. You know what I'm saying? Look, this has been kind of my critique of Idubs for the last, I don't know, one to two years, give or take. I don't necessarily care at all about the personal controversies of Idubs. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. I've said that numerous times, right? Like, I'm not a fan of the uh, framing his wife as the, uh, 
the complete reason for his f***ing fall off or whatever. I don't, I don't care about any of that shit. My primary problem was basically just that the content seemed uninspired, right? It seemed like he probably fell out of love with making videos, or at the very least, he was like finding his his kind of stride in this new uh, era of his content, right? Which is fair enough, man. I've been there, obviously. I have not been at the, my peak <laughs> uh, for many years on end. But yeah, 100% women video. I liked it. And mother brought back bad unboxing. Okay, that's uh, it's a good sign. And you know, I mean, the views reflect it. Am I right? Look at this, four hundred fucking k. That's nothing to fucking laugh at, dude. And so yeah, I'm not gonna react to this entire video, but let's just say that Idubs he actually takes a stand. He starts on a lot of conservative talking heads, rightfully so, in my opinion. So is the dog starting to rediscover their bark? Yes. Facts. The dog is rediscovering its bark. Okay. Rightfully so. Okay. I think that pointing out the extremely reactionary, like literally reactionary, but also, you know, politically reactionary nature of a lot of these talking heads, the way that they just fuel the f***ing fire, the way that these opportunists as i'll put them jump on any emerging story that they think they they can project their you know political bent onto it uh it is kind of gross to me it, it is and yes there are ways this can be applied on both sides of the spectrum whatever you want to say but in this particular case yeah right-wing talking heads jumped on the opportunity to preemptively declare proudly declare that an olympic boxer who happened to win gold medal was actually a man despite fighting other women let's get a little look here at the start of this video people don't go into fighting that had great lives and people don't do well at fighting that had great lives so now I'm looking at this athlete. I don't imagine she was Miss Popular at school. I don't imagine a lot of nice things happened to her. But I do know the sacrifice that it would take to make an Olympic team, let alone to make the Olympic finals. You have no money. You have no job. This doesn't pay. But there is one payoff, which if should you succeed, and only three of them will, gold, silver, and bronze, somebody somewhere will pat you on the back and tell you, good job. She's an amateur athlete. She's gonna go fight four people this week and get nothing for it. None of you would have even known she was fighting. So, so now imagine you reach your goal, you sacrifice, you ate the spaghettios, you lived three deep down in mom's basement, you did all of these things and you brought honor to your country. And not only did somebody not tell you good job, which is the only thing you ever hoped to get, they now do the opposite and they tell you you're a man. You think life for her gets better? This is this. Is Damn, calling out Logan Paul. This is the purest form of evil unfolding right before your eyes. A man was swallowed to beat up a woman, which is just factually incorrect. Jake Paul falling in the same. J.K. Rowling. Could any picture sum up our new men's right movement better? Such a terrible. J.D. Vance. Interesting. For those who don't know, Donald Trump's vice presidential candidate, baby. This is where Kamala Harris's idea about gender led to a grown man pummeling a woman in a boxing match. Crazy. Whole thing. Enough of the gender insanity. For her to have said. Dylan trained her whole. Oh right, right, right. My bad. That's the guy who fought Logan. Yeah. About her. It is. Elon Musk. Pierce Morgan. Not true. There is no test. Rally games. Rest in peace. JK Rowling deletes tweets. Pierce Morgan deleted sweets. <laughs> Rename the Matildas the X Xs so they know that we're girls. And lastly, you have Lin Yu Ting of Taipei and Iman Khalif of Algeria, the two women boxers who are competing at this year's Olympics. As a professional boxer and boxing promoter and <laughs> radical <laughs> That was good actually. I didn't even and radical trans <laughs> Owen won. 
she is. activist. I felt like this story was tailor-made for me. One of the first things that I discovered was that uh, there were more people talking about Iman Khalif than the Olympic Dutch racist. Yeah, I looked into that case. It doesn't look good, to say the least. The celebrities that decided to speak up on this controversy, ah, they did not send their best. Stinky McFart ass, the fattest baby in the room. Every member of the Paul household, I wrote down here, the family that seems like they might use the word bloodline one too many times in casual conversation. Piers Morgan, Dilbert, Doug Dimidome, Tutter Mouse from Bear in the Big Blue House. I was listening to him on a podcast with the Purple Otters, and they were what? saying all sorts of like awful transphobic shit. What? Yeah, so the wait's been long enough. Let's hear from these people. They let a transgender, there's apparently two, at least two transgender boxers that are fighting in women's boxing. I don't, what the f? I don't understand. He can't understand because <laughs> you're not. Related. Look at this. This is a man. This is a man. That's a dude. And if it is a woman, a woman, a very ugly woman. Khalif, like, slaps Karini in the chest. Ooh, ooh. They got Brett Cooper. Damn, interesting. Almost looks like Karini gets groped. And you've got this disgusting. Interesting. She f***ing impl... <laughs> oh, Brett Cooper f implied. Not only did a man beat up a woman in front of the world, that, by the way, woman potentially like sexually assaulted the fucking other woman. That's crazy. Like slaps Karini in the chest. Almost looks like Karini gets groped. And you've got this disgusting piece of shit that tries to come over and hey, it's okay, it's okay. Angel Karini wants nothing to do with this guy. They have no yeah. breasts. They are built like men. They are five ten. The far left wants to allow biological males to beat the living crap out of women in boxing. She got hit so hard she didn't know what the hell hit her. It's a person that transitioned. He was a good male boxer. Congratulations to the. Uh... Oh, dude, I love this guy, man. You remember when Tim Pool uh, faked, faked a massive part of his fucking documentary about uh, immigrants in Sweden? Does anyone remember that? I don't know. If you don't remember that, you should check out Hey It's Vadim, his video about that. Because, uh, yeah, Tim Pool got f***ing exposed, bro. Quite a f***ing hack. Male, uh, uh, bravo on slugging that woman in a boxing match. Wow, you really proved how great you are at fighting by punching a woman in the face. Is it not obvious that these people are just f***ed up? They're <laughs> Anyway, okay, look, beyond... Whatever take you have about this whole scenario, which, by the way, it, it was a woman. Like, let's be clear, like, you know, that that fought in that boxing match. Whatever take you have, I like seeing this. Okay, whatever the opinion, right? I like the fact that Idubs is gaining the confidence. It feels like to just actually, you know, basically present um, these more pointed videos right and yeah on top of that the bad unboxing was a lot of you know it was a lot of fun it was a little bit of a f familiar feel the one thing i'll say though about the bad unboxing is that mr dupes is not accepting packages from fans he's worried that his new hater fan base is gonna put some sh in his f packages He's worried, you know, because he's maybe seen my, my prank on Sneeko. He's worried that I'm going to send him a bot. I'm just kidding. He's probably more worried about Sam Hyde's audience or some shit. But the point is, I think it's pretty rational for him to not want to have the packages sent by fans to his home. You know, he kind of ran that gauntlet. But I didn't like that he was the one who bought the Amazon whatever items. He was the one who bought the items that he unboxed. And yeah, it seems like he forgot. But bro, Mr. Adoops, you should be getting your boy Dane, okay? Uncle Dane or any anybody else. You could get Anissa, whomever. Anybody, get anybody else. Get other random YouTubers, okay? 
have multiple packages for multiple YouTubers or something. Have other YouTubers send you up items. It would be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool if it's like, oh, this person, their face and thumbnail, they sent me X dog shit. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I, the real reason I'm suggesting that is because I think that the novelty, the novelty might be a lot more, you know, engaging if uh, you have no clue what's in the packages. But it's kind of through coming, th coming from a approved source. You know what I mean? Anyway, my stupid ass opinion aside, uh, on top of, you know, having that dog in him in some of his recent videos, our boy uh, has also still maintained uploading his fucking podcast which is crazy okay i to be honest when i first saw this podcast i um i thought it was boring and i won't lie i do kind of still think it's boring i check in every now and then i do not watch every single episode it's not exactly my vibe but um they have consistently fucking uploaded it and that in my opinion is deserving of respect it's still fucking called She Ruined My Career, which is, uh, I would change it. I would change it. But, you know, I get it in the, the meta meme, I understand. My camera fucking died? No. Here's what I'll say, okay? The podcast has improved. That's what I'll say. And I base this, having watched about maybe 15 episodes, okay, give or take. And... The like on the like on mic chemistry, I think, has just improved because there's 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 always a bit of awkwardness. I understand all this shit. It's like hard to fucking kind of yap sometimes for like an hour and a half and have like conversations flow and shit. But you know, I've noticed an improvement. The set's cool. I fuck with it, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I do feel like there's an energy and aura that. Idub's content is on the fucking up and up. I also was peeping some of Idub's um, podcasts, and he talked about how he is now taking ADHD medication. How he basically kind of seemingly discovered or believes that he um, had undiagnosed ADHD, right? And so now that he has started taking the medication, he has found. He is much more productive and he feels much more optimistic about the future. And all these things are great. Okay. All these things. I hope he can, you know, successfully capitalize on because in my eyes, all right, my, my naive little nostalgic fucking eyes. But yes, if, if Mr. Idubs can gain back some fucking respect, if he can, you know, come to peace with the fact that he's a commentator, you know, beyond an internet personality, beyond you know, a uh, a slur sayer of the past. If he can regain his roots in commentary and kind of regain some respect, I'd be a happy camper. Okay, I'm team fucking items. I've said this many times, and so yeah, I don't know. We can watch a little bit of the podcast, but I didn't exactly curate any particular fucking uh, part of it. But yeah, I like I really fuck with Uncle Dane. Okay, talented editor. Talented TF2 player. Talented Jamie. Young Jamie. Extra podcast host. Um, and so, yeah, this is glazing. Yeah. What can I say? If you don't like me glazing this fucking guy, then uh, you should fuck off. Because uh, this is my father. So, A little bit more. I, I don't know about that. Say, Put some fucking respect on his name. I just want to say, I have a handicap because I have really bad period cramps right now. Okay. So, it's going to... I <laughs> what a fucking... What a way to start a fucking podcast. Yeah, I'm on the rag. I'm going to be a bitch this entire episode. Uh, that's that's some chat shit. I love it. I have a handicap! <laughs> Sorry, I was just laughing at the way you said it. I, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that I know more things than even Anissa. And he oh, said knows a lot of things. I don't know a lot of well, things. You're like a you're like a fun fact machine. I, I, I don't like retain that information. Very well, well, I tried to not make it general. Here's the thing I'll say. I fucking hate his style. I fucking hate everything about it. I hate the pedo stash. I hate the fucking skinhead shave. I hate the pants. I hate the fucking socks. I hate the Crocs. I hate the fucking shirt. 
Teddy fucking fresh acid shit. But everything else is nice. Everything else I fuck with. I like the eyeball. I like the speed. This thing. Canadian CH. She's I just, canceled my brain. now. She, she's been canceled every three days. <laughs> no, she's really canceled because she said that she's not going to vote for her. She said, she said like the ultimate no-no, which is they're bad people on both sides kind of thing. Oh, no. She was like, dude. That makes me like her more. <laughs> like, Should've... she was not being an enlightened centrist. She's probably just a fucking, like, loose leftist who's realizing that both fucking parties operate within a very small margin of difference. But anyway. That vote blue no matter who! <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, Shit. she's a fence sitter, she's, which is the worst thing you can be. <laughs> yeah. The I'm I'm curious. I, I really wonder if she is actually a fence sitter. I wonder. The worst I feel, thing you can be is in the gray area. I Fuck actually you. feel really bad for her because I don't think she um kind of blowing up in an election year where people are like demanding your uh opinion yeah. is an well, interesting one. I have this attitude where the faster you blow up, the faster you are hated. Mm -hmm. Like Matt Reif. Mm -hmm. Remember that guy? Yeah. He blew up super quick. Yeah, it becomes pretty, like... Um, It's like the volatile, like, the love is so mm -hmm. volatile, it's so quick that, like, right. it, it's like a physics law or something. But I, it makes me really sad. Somebody was explaining this, and I actually 100% agree with this. I think Chapel became loved because she just was so real. She didn't give PR answers. She, she was... She is mm -hmm. herself fully. Yeah. And people really wanted that mm -hmm. until they realized that she was a real person. Uh -huh. And then suddenly they really didn't want that. Like yeah. she's saying. Yeah, it is kind of a, a bit of an L. The authenticity, man. The authenticity as you see my frozen fucking face. You love that authentic fucking -ticity, dude. Until they authentically give a fucking opinion that you wholeheartedly disagree with. And then it's like, fuck you, you piece of shit. I don't know. I, I kind of I kind of like engaging with characters online that are fucking I disagree with. I'm maybe a weirdo in that sense. Maybe it's because most people, right, when they go online, it truly is a way to escape, right? It's a way for them to effectively forget that the world outside can be cruel and callous and fucking uncaring, right? And so I totally understand why people fucking get into cozy, like, contained, sanitized little echo chambers where they hear what they want to hear from the people they want to hear it from, and it's a reliable opinion that will not deviate from an expectation. I understand the appeal of that because... It can be fucking stressful to have the harshness of reality or the harshness of a conflicting opinion enter your fucking safe space, you know? But for me, it's just my way. I really like handling grenades. That's the way that I put it. I really, truly do enjoy the unpacking of ideas because for me right the the reason that i advocate for this it's not just out of a pure masochism although maybe that plays a small part maybe 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 whatever but the real reason i i would like to think is that when i hear people say things and i got gut instinct like just viscerally disagree right i don't always know why i disagree i don't always fully understand why I'm so put off by them saying that. And so by engaging with these ideas, right, for me, it's a way to be confronted by it, number one, be aware that this opinion exists, right, the awareness. And then after being aware, you kind of think about it, you're forced to think about it in a way, and you basically form your own coherent reasons for why you dislike it right once you're aware right once it's on your mind once you're confronted by it it becomes a lot easier to actually communicate to translate the gut feeling into perceivable um reasoning 
as to why you disagree with the person, right? And that, in my head, right, that just makes it so that uh, you're constantly confronted with the potential to have critical thought. You know what I mean? This can also obviously manifest in a bad way, right? If you're just always consuming content of people that you fucking disagree with or dislike, that can make you a truly very cynical person. I've felt this effect, trust me, okay? I've represented that in the Sneeko video I made. But as a general rule, what can I say, you know? I just like handling grenades. <laughs> and I like to think that, uh, you know, the more grenades I handle... Uh, the uh, the more the more nuanced, the, the closer I'll actually get to the truth, right? By engaging in it in it, in these ideas in a bit more of a dialectic way, right? Which when I say dialectic, I kind of do mean it, even in a uh, Socratic sense, because that was Socrates' whole thing, you know. Uh, that's what's fascinating about, you know, <laughs> written by Plato, obviously, but like the Socratic, the Socrates, fucking. Uh, dialogues is that the idea is two people talking two basically kind of opposing presences they counter each other's points they kind of together even though it's through antagonism but technically together they work toward a more um coherent truth right or at the very least they kind of work toward elucidating their own opinions a lot more effectively and ideally you know through this dialogue this kind of jousting you do come toward a more correct or more true interpretation of what you whatever the disagreement is now the irony with the actual dialogues of socrates is that most of the time okay despite having a very interesting discussion and foiling off of each other very well right and actually seeming to kind of come to a few conclusions the basic conclusion is usually damn i guess we don't have all the answers you know they usually don't come to any decisive conclusion on at the end of the dialogue but they still both walk away with a much more nuanced much more kind of deep understanding of their own opinions, right? And so, yeah, a little bit of a tangent, but uh, that's that's why I like handling fucking grenades, my friends. Saying things that, like, a lot of real people would say right. to their friends. And it's not PR shit. It's not like, PR, PR shit. shit is not what she's saying. Yes. Dude, see, I agree with this so fucking much. There's, okay, people will call it double speak. People will call it corporate speak. Oh, fuck, I wasn't even, I don't think I, anyway. They'll call it double speak. They'll call it corporate speak. Okay. They'll call it PR speak. All this shit to me is the same shit, but you know, I am very fucking familiar with uh, PR, corporate, double speak, whatever you would say. I'm pretty good at reading past it. Okay. But uh, yes, there are people who are calculated in their conversations, and those are usually people who are media trained or who operate at extremely high managerial levels, right? where they have a lot of stakeholders and they understand consequences. And then there are people who are more authentic, less refined, less calculated. And of course, those make, usually those types make much better entertainers, right? They're a lot more fun to engage with because, you know, what they're saying is usually more exciting, right? Because they're actually saying something, you know? Um, but obviously that is a brand risk it's not exactly a safe thing to do if your primary goal is to market a monetizable product in this case a musician so yeah would yeah yeah so like That's a good point i i don't i think it's really sad because the thing that made her really loved is like ultimately making a lot of people like turn around and really hate her turn around yeah that. I mean, even like her, like putting a boundary up of like, I'm having a met, like, I, I have to say this until you have had the entire internet or what, at least what feels like the entire internet jumping down your throat before a live event. 
I don't think you can have an opinion on whether or not somebody should or should not be canceling their live event that they have to perform at, because that is a special type of hell that like, I don't think people understand what that does to your like mental health. Yeah. So, cause she has two concerts that she canceled. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's a literal performance. It's yeah. not like you fucking clocking in at the no, gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking go sing. Like, I'm sorry. If you're having a mental health crisis, I don't want to see you get up on the stage. Yeah. Like, I get it. Please. Mm -hmm. Like, get. That's like, fair. So I, I just, I want people to know. I, I like these opinions. And I'm going to leave it at that before I don't like them. Which maybe I wouldn't. But yeah. What's the classic fucking H3 clip? Okay, yeah. This clip, but it's Ian. Wow. Wow, Ian. Ethan. Great, great moves. moves. Keep, Keep it, it up. up. Proud, Proud of you. you. Fuck yeah, dude. My frozen face. God bless, Idubs. Reach out. Let's have a conversation, my friend. I think it'll bear fruit. At the very least, I don't think it's going to be a net negative. So, yeah, that's my offer on my frozen fucking face. The gun on my book right beside me.